Hello and welcome back to Boxer Gaming and today we're going to have a look at another tutorial about Tesseracts. Now these things are absolutely amazing, one of my favourite items in uh, Feed the Bees compared to uh, Ticket. Absolutely great. Look at this beautiful surrounding by the way. These Red Rock Mountains are so high <laughs> and there's so many of these beautiful um, ravines, pretty cool. Anyways, right, so let's get started shall we? To make some Tesseract, so you probably already know what they do, so I'm not going to get into that till we finish. <laughs> uh, to make some, we first need to make some hardened glass, and for that we need some pulverized obsidian, which is, you know, pulverized in a pulverizer, duh. And you put that in an induction smelter, and you put the obsidian there, let next to it, boom. And that will make you some hardened glass. There we go. Now you take the hardened glass, and you add some tin and a diamond to it, and that makes you a Tesseract frame. Cool. Now once you get those frames, um, you want to pick them up, and I'm just going to pick up this one, why not? Uh, you're going to put that in your liquid transposer, boom, and then you want to smelt up some ender pearls. So this will turn into um, goo, and you get 250 for each, you need a bucket worth uh, for each frame, which is um, a thousand. So you need four ender pearls to fill one of these up. Now, once you fill them up, as this thing will be doing quite slowly, so I'm not going to wait, but once you fill them up, you get these unattuned tesseracts. Um, and those you can combine into make three different tesseracts. So there's an energy one, there's a liquid one, and an item one. And we're going to go through all of them, although they all work very similar. Cool. Let me just uh, put that in there as well. Okay. Has it been done yet? Yeah, there we go. So that's what it makes. Pretty simple. <clears throat> right, energy tesseract. Um, you want to get a redstone conductance coil, which you make using uh, Electrum and redstone. And of course, Electrum, you know how to make that, I'm um, assuming. Uh, it's just some um, power of silver and gold. It's not that bad. Uh, you add to that the unattuned Tesseract, some more Electrum ingot, some silver and some lead. And it makes you an energy Tesseract. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, now, do I have any of those in my inventory? Nope, I don't. Okay, so let's uh, pick this one up and this one up. Right, so let's see what this one does first. So this is a means of transporting power across distances, across dimensions, doesn't matter. It's absolutely awesome. So I've got a redstone energy cell here, it's completely full. Uh, and let's place one of these babies next to it. Right, so you right click it and you can see it already started. Now this is actually for my uh, Let's play world. So apparently it's shared between worlds. It's a bit weird, but okay, that's fine. So the first thing you're going to do is enter a frequency number. Now you can, uh, you can of course put a number in there between 1 and 999. Uh, so there's, there's plenty of them, you know. Um, and this is, well, it's just a way of, you know, making different tracks, for example. It's the same with any chest, where you can go white, 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 or white, white, red, or, you know. Cool. So then you want to put in a name. Um, it's easier. So let's call this uh, the power station. Click the plus so it saves it and click set frequency. So now it's set and enabled. So now I've got a magma crucible here that I want to have power. There's no power at the moment. So all we do is put another one of these next to it. Uh, click on the power station and click set frequency. Done. But uh, it's getting power. How cool is that? So this, of course, is a very small distance, but you can put it as you, you know, I have one in my Let's Play in the Nether. Works beautifully. Uh, you can use this especially to, to power quarries. You know, you don't have to carry these things around anymore. You just plonk one of these down next to a quarry and it'll power it beautifully. Cool. So that's the first one. Now, the next one is the liquid tesseract. So you make this using a, a pneumatic servo, which is very simple to make. Some iron, redstone, glass. And then you want to have some tin, silver, and copper. And again, the unattuned test tract. And that makes you one of these. So I've got two here already. So we've got this magma crucible, and it will make some um, some liquids, you know. Um, on the output side that I said to the right, put one of these, and whoop, that's an NG one. That's not the right one. I put a liquid one, which is a bit of a darker yellow color. Right click it, and you can see lava transport. That's again for my Let's Play. Um, now, these frequencies, I can do two again because they're not shared across worlds. Uh, sorry, across Tesseract. So the energy Tesseract uh, frequency 2 does not interact with the liquid Tesseract uh, frequency 2. Cool. 
So we call this uh, the Magma Crucible. You know, it doesn't really matter. Cool. Boom. Done. Set frequency. That's cool. Uh, so as soon as this cooks up some stuff and melts it down, it'll put it into this if there's a valid output. So for that, I've got a liquid transposer here. Now, this ex of course accepts liquid from the blue side, so that's this side. So we plonk down another one of these liquid um, tesseracts, click on the magma crucible, set frequency, and supposedly, if we put something in there now, of course that is quite handy if you do that. You can cook up some redstone, for example. Boom, it's in there. Now this one again I've set up in the nether to transport lava from the nether to the overworld. Pretty awesome. And the last one is the item tesseract. So again the undertune tesseract, some tin at the top this time, silver, tin, and again a pneumatic servo. So again that's uh, iron, redstone, glass, pretty cool. And it makes you an item tesseract. So I've got two here, let's, uh, let's use those. Let me get those off so I don't get confused. So the output side is red for me this time. Put that there. Uh, again, make one called, I don't know, uh, 555. And we call it um, transposer. Cool. Boom. Save. Done. Then we've got a chest here. Put another one next to it. Click on transposer. Click set frequency. And now it's connected to the chest or any other output uh, that it can put its items in. So why don't we get some of these cans, fill them up. Uh, where's, where are they? There. Fill them up. Fill them up. Uh, it's, it's too slow. Oh, God. Come on. Faster. More. Hey. How much goes in there? Actually, I actually don't know. It's an interesting question. How much goes in a can? All right. You know what we'll do? We'll get a bucket. We'll get a bucket. That's easier. Uh, I don't know if you can put redstone in a bucket, actually. <laughs> container. Lava container. I don't want a lava container. I want a normal container. Come on. This is not fill. That's a bit weird. Alright. You know what we're going to do? We're going to do it with an NG. Energy. Um, cell frame. Why not? Why not? Right. So that's filling at the moment. And as soon as it's filled... It'll plonk it into the item um, tesseract and plonk it into this chest. At least that's uh, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> that's the way it should work, anyways. So let's have a look at that, if that works. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Boom. Done. How cool is that? This is this is one of those additions that I was missing for so long, and it's it's worked so well. Now just to um show you that it actually works with multiple as well so here we got this and that um, we can put another one here for example so i don't know let's put down another magma crucible with another one of these energy ones behind it and click on the power station save and that's getting power as well cool so there's a few more things we can do with these uh, and that's on these options here now the redstone control works just like any other uh, i use it to control my quarry so i can turn my quarry off just by turning the um supply the, the test track that's supplying the power off pretty cool uh, we can also go to configuration here now here you can set the access level so for example now it's public access so anyone can use this i can also set it to only only and you can see that the frequencies change as well so you can have some public frequencies and some um once only for yourself uh there's no friend list or anything i hope they add that that would be pretty cool like on a server you could just have four people using the same power station that would be amazing anyways and then you have this setting here so at the moment the transport mode is sent receive so it'll both receive power and send it out uh, you can change that now it's send only so it's not going to get any power from any other test track right? it's just going to send it out or you can do receive only now, you don't really have to play with this unless you're in a specific situation. For example, this one is sent receive because it's never going to get any power. So you can just leave it. You know, you don't have to play around with it. Um, but that is Tesseract uh, in under 10 minutes. So that's, um, it's a very complicated thing. Or at least people think it's very complicated, but it's actually very simple. It's one of the easiest items to make. Uh, you just need to get a lot of ender pearls. But as you know, ender pearls can be made using, um, uh, using the minium stone with some iron. So it's really quite easy to get. 
So, thanks for watching, guys. Um, that was Test Tracks in under 10 minutes, and I will see you next time.